Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. There are so many good gaming mice to choose from right now at the end of 2022, but I want to do a video on my personal top five and why. Let's get into it. And coming in at my number one spot for my own personal favorite right now in 2022 is my G Pro Superlight. And I am not talking about the default G Pro Superlight that has still to this day a lot of side flex out of the box mushy side clicks with a lot of pre and post travel. I am talking about my modded Silent G G Pro Superlight. We did a lot of things to this mouse, but I wanted it to remain a sleeper build. And what that means is we did nothing to the top shell and we kept the bottom shell as the stock shell. A lot of the changes are in the internal side of the mouse, weight modding this to 52 grams with the default shell intact. You can see we have a battery swap here and we glued the battery to the bottom of the base weight modding this and weight balancing it perfectly coming in at 52 grams again with skates but if i ever want to remove the skates and get to the inside of the mouse one of the coolest features on this is it is hot swappable right now i have japanese omrons which are just so light and fast and tactile i absolutely love japanese omrons for the g pro super light compared to the original switches they are lighter faster and not quite as loud so if you're ever playing a game that you are spamming you actually will not quite hear the Japanese arm rounds, but I can assure you, you are going to feel them. We wanted to change the scroll wheel, so we changed the scroll from the scratchy default encoder on the G Pro Superlight to a TTC gold encoder, which again, you cannot hear quite as loud as the default encoder, but feels just so extremely good with its tactile feedback during the steps of scrolling up and down. In terms of these side buttons, this is my favorite part of the mouse. Silent G's idea to go with white dot switches on the side. We kept the default black G Pro Super Light side buttons just to kind of have a better pop compared to the default white. And these are, I'm telling you guys, the best side buttons I have ever used to date. They are so light, so tactile and responsive compared to the default buttons. They just sound as though you are driving down a hammer on a nail. It is such an enjoyable experience. The best side buttons I've ever used on any mouse, period. So Silent G did an extremely good job in keeping that default build intact, weight modding it to 52 grams with skates, offering me hot swap capabilities whenever I get bored and want to change the switches and just making literally the best side buttons I have ever used. So extremely good job to Silent G. And the reason why I like having the G Pro Superlight remain on my desk is that it is such a shape that I feel consistent on. It is like old faithful. Like whenever you are trying to get to your destination, you know this is the car that is going to get you there without any issues whatsoever. Default sensor performance is extremely good. Everything about the wireless latency is killer here. You know there's not going to be an issue when you're using the G Pro Superlight. And I do have to say that the shape in general, if I'm ever playing inconsistently, I always know I can pick up the G Pro Superlight and I will play at a consistent level. It's just one of those shapes that feels so good to swap to if you ever need a hard reset from using something a little bit more aggressive shape-wise. So for that reason, I really do love the G Pro Superlight, but Silent G really made this the best mouse out of my collection right now. And coming in at my personal number two spot is the Razer Death Adder V3 Pro. In my opinion, out of all of the releases this year, this is the best performing mouse out of the box and has the best build quality out of the box. Really, I have not seen a whole lot of reported concerns, but the, the main issue when the mouse first released is that it was kind of an overhaul of the original Death Adder shape that a lot of people really enjoyed. I would definitely love to see the original Death Adder shape come in with the same weight and the same internals, but I'm not mad at the shape and performance of the Razer Death Adder V3 Pro. Right now, it is my favorite ergonomic mouse and my best performing ergonomic mouse. The optical switches here that Razer continuously improves upon release after release and even during a launch or a release are just extremely good. They're light, they're crispy, they are so poppy that you get a nice tactile feedback and the performance of them is extremely good in terms of click latency. The side buttons are matte, which I really do enjoy, and they just have minimal, minimal pre-travel and no post-travel whatsoever. And I have literally zero side flex on mouse one and mouse two to even remotely speak of. Scroll wheel feels great. The switches feel great. Everything about the build quality is of no concern to me whatsoever. I know some people have issue with the coating of the mouse. 
interestingly enough, my black copy is actually smoother than my white. Um, I prefer the texture of the black copy. Default skates out of the box are actually pretty solid as well, and you do have the option. It is the only one that has the option for 4K Hertz wireless with the hyper pulling dongle that you do have to buy separately. I would suggest checking it out, see if you like it. I don't think it's going to turn your performance from zero to hero. I didn't notice any performance increase at all. It is just kind of a quality of life improvement where your movements feel a little bit smoother as you are whipping your mouse around. So it is a cool option to have at least that you can check out and see whether or not it really does increase your performance or not. I do have the mouse paired with the Aqua Control Zero. I think this is a awesome combo for the default skates of the Death Adder and one of the combos that I am performing my best on right now. And I do just want to reiterate again that if you're a EC1 lover or you like ergonomic mice, I would absolutely recommend checking out the Razer Death Adder V3 Pro, one of my best performers right now. And just an experience for its size and, and overall shape, you don't really get with anything else and it might be some time before we get there on other releases even moving into 2023 extremely good mouse highly recommend checking it out if you love ergo and up next guys in my number three spot i have the pulsar x2 i have a copy in red i have a copy in black and out of all of the reported complaints with build quality squeaky clicks double clicking kill 8.0s i have not had that issue on either of my copies my copies feel great and i do personally feel that this is the best symmetrical shape that has released this year it is pretty safe but also plays very aggressively it has a targeted hump towards the back end of the mouse and then kind of aggressively slopes forward giving you a pretty low profile button height that feels extremely good with the concave mouse one and mouse two that kind of lock your fingers into place and just kind of provides for not only a comfortable experience but again a very well performing experience I do like that the side buttons are matte and the overall coating is perfectly acceptable for me. I have not really had any issues with the coating whatsoever. It has a TTC gold encoder that feels great. Mouse 3, extremely spammable. Mouse 1 and Mouse 2, again, are kill 8.0s. Side buttons, I have no pre or post travel that is of any concern whatsoever. And likewise on Mouse 1 and Mouse 2, a little bit of side flex on Mouse 1 and Mouse 2 going sideways. So overall, general build quality for me has been perfect on both my copies. I love the mouse. And again, it is one of the mice of this year that I have the most time on in general and one of my favorite symmetrical shapes on the market right now. It is one of the first mice that have implemented a 3395 sensor and when the mouse first released it did have a sleep cycle that if you were to allow your mouse to go into sleep mode when you wake it up it caused increased latency that has subsequently been fixed so no issues whatsoever in regard to performance the only thing i did change on my mouse are the skates i did in, uh, change these to core pads the default skates are just a little bit too thin a little bit too scratchy other than that extremely good mouse and i think that it is worth every penny one of my favorite symmetrical shapes of all time and definitely the best symmetrical shape that released this year and up next guys in my number four spot is the lambzu atlantis i think for lambzu's first mouse there are multiple things that i love first of all out of the box the build quality is the closest you're going to get to the razor death adder v3 pro the build quality is almost perfect on my copy i have barely any side flex on mouse one and mouse two no switch grinding when moving around mouse one and mouse two no pre or post travel on mouse 4 and mouse 5 and everything here from the coding to the weight to the weight balance for this size of a mouse is extremely nice lamzu did something also pre-production that i really enjoyed seeing they asked the community what switches would you like to see in our lamzu atlantis we answered and responded blue shell pink dots and they literally have put that in the mouse i love to see a company reaching out to the community and taking suggestions from us and also the default skates here are some of the best on the market for a default experience i love the skates i think they feel extremely good on a wide variety of pads and the bottom shell here is just really unique and very interesting looking also contributing of course to its lower weight but for this size mouse at 55 grams and perfect weight balance it really just feels extremely good i mean the build quality you can squeeze this thing to death and it does not budge so the lambsu atlantis i think it's a shape that is probably the closest thing on the market to an xm1 the coating in the black charcoal is probably the closest thing to the xm1 coating 
I really love this mouse. It performs extremely well with its 3395 sensor and definitely deserves a spot in my top five. Where things get a little bit harder for me, guys, is picking my mouse in the fifth slot. And I think it's going to come down to a buzzer beater decision. I really can't decide between the Nijutsu Sora, the Fantec Aria, and the Cooler Master MM712. I think for my own personal grip and preferences, I'm leaning towards the MM712. But in terms of weight, weight balance, the Fantec Aria and the Ninjutsu Sora definitely do it better. I like the optical switches in the MM712. I like the coating of the MM712, but I do like the weight balance in the Fantec Aria and just its overall width for me is a very comfortable experience that I play very well on. The Ninjutsu Sora is a little bit too narrow for me, particularly at the front of the mouse, but undisputably out of the mice in this video, the Ninjutsu Sora is just paper light at 47 grams in this black version and the weight balance is just absolutely phenomenal. The switches feel great, but overall the build quality in all three of these mice is superb. And I think for anybody looking for a new main mouse, I would not rule out either the Fantec Aria, the Sora, or the MM712. It really just depends what you're looking for. So for me, it's very hard to pick a spot for number five in this video between these three. I would just say that all three of these definitely deserve to be mentioned in this particular video. Unquestionably, a lot of good mice on the market right now, but if somebody was to tell me I needed to pack my things up and go to a tournament tomorrow, my top two options would be my Silent G G Pro Superlight and the Razer Death Adder V3 Pro. These are my top two options. The other options are things that I really enjoy putting time on, I really enjoy playing with. Take what I say and my personal preferences with a little grain of salt. A lot of these mice might work for you better than my top two. So do keep in mind that this is just what works for me, my grip, my play style, and my hand size. I hope that helped guys. If it did, please leave a sub to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next review. Peace.